everyone. Boy, I'm going to tell you, it's been one cold day here in the center. Oh my gosh, I am ready to just roll up in a little ball and hope that um, everything gets warm fast. It was 59 degrees when I walked in. <laughs> so it must have been horribly cold Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I was out. Um, I was spending time with my daughter. Um, I had some things that I had to accomplish. And although they didn't all get accomplished, I did have a marvelous time with my daughter, as I always do. Um, what I wanted to talk to you guys about is, it's you know, I keep harping on this Halloween and our spiritual review. But I also wanted to talk with you guys about the program that I'm doing with... Um, Nikki and brother Nikki Bruton Phillips and brother Francis. Um, I wanted to talk to you about it because I think that really our it ties into our spiritual review and what we can do for ourselves and our families, and how come we started this program and the importance of it. Now, um, I know that it's really important that we connect generationally with our kids, our grandkids. Um, our nieces, our nephews, it's very important that we be the guiding light for them. And it's especially important now during this time, but um, this is where the wicked part of Swanda comes out, you know, self-claimed wicked and nice diva of America. This is where the wicked part comes out because, you know, I'm seeing a lot of things and, and I don't mean to, uh, there's no judgment here, there's just frustration. Okay, so my point is, is that everyone sees their children and your kid is so special. Absolutely, your kid is special. But we made a big mistake, okay? We made them um, indigo children and crystal children and Aquarian children and we, we named their spiritual as if one is better than the other and it's kind of not true um the time is important um the time of awakening is is now um we have you know like i'm i'm an aquarian age child and i came in to help bring in this higher awareness and this enlightenment so did my daughter's generation and my grandkids. Well, I've got one grandkid who's a classified indigo. The other two are crystal children. They're all supposed to be these special kids. And what we're doing is a really big disservice to our children and our grandchildren. And I'll tell you why, because we're putting a lot of pressure on them. They are metaphysical spiritual beings. Same as you, same as me. They are powerful in their own right. They're beautiful, beautiful spirits. And not one is more beautiful than the other. We all come in and fulfill our destiny. So all of us were these amazing little kids, right? We were all filled with wonder and awe about the bugs that climbed all over the walls and the ground. I remember sticking my finger, I just told somebody about this, in a cocoon of a caterpillar and squished the cocoon and I still I was like two or three doing this and stuck my finger in and, and to see what is this and I can still feel the goo on my finger totally grossed me out to where I, I will never stick my finger in another cocoon I guarantee you that <laughs> But we learned, we watched the world, we were in awe of the bugs, the birds, the bees, with the flowers that blossomed, the snow that fell. I remember when I was growing up in Gallup, there was a lot of snow, and I mean a lot of snow. And we made forts, so we could hide in the fort, and we had hot chocolate and cookies, and we threw snowballs at each other and had wars, and snowball fights and it was amazing but we were also spiritual beings some of us more engaged in our spiritual gifts than others and others became more engaged in their spiritual gifts as they grew there's a lot of people in my generation that will tell you that they were told oh 
you're just imagining things. Those things aren't real. They aren't happening. And we had to really work at keeping that uh, awareness about ourselves. And some of us even postponed it for a while. I remember my 20s. <laughs> there was a lot of postponing. Because <laughs> I was often experiencing life as a 20-something. And raising two kids. And um, getting divorced. And finding my feet and maturing in what we classify society today. So some things had to be juggled and it would be great. It would be great if we could be these wonderful metaphysical beings all the time. And as we grew and we got older, it did, it changed and it happened. But each child is here for their destiny. Okay, each child has a part to play in this great awakening. And trying to force your child to be something that they're really not. If they're not here to be a psychic medium, maybe they're supposed to be an amazing healer. Maybe they're the ones that stop the unrest when it comes to racial strife. Maybe they're the ones that bring words of wisdom through the music that they create and words that they write. We have to honor that. And trying to make our kids these great metaphysical beings because that's what we wished our parents did for us. Because trust me, I wish my parents were a lot more awake and had told me all these great things and trained me, but that wasn't my destiny. My destiny was to come in and do just what I did, to gather the information that I needed to wake myself up, to understand how I was creating my world in order to bring more enlightenment into the world, to be the voice that I feel that is important to be, you know, say the things that my voice is, is unique in saying. Um, doesn't mean that there aren't other voices. That doesn't mean that there aren't other amazingly gifted, spiritually awakened people that say great things. They are. And they're wonderful. And wouldn't you like your kids to train with them? And wouldn't you like to train with them? Because that's what we're offering. We're here. This isn't a competition to see whose child in the family is more gifted. This isn't a competition to see where we can get fast as we can get it. I mean, this is our time of awakening. And when we run around thinking that um, we have to do it and become masters at it, we miss the part of the awakening. Because a master knows it takes lifetimes, many lifetimes. And we have all been walking through many lifetimes. So why are we so hard on ourselves to get it done now? I think it's because we all sense that change is coming and we all sense that we have a role to play. Well, our role is not to rush the progress. Our role is to progress, to connect to our higher consciousness. Our job is to awaken and heal the metaphysical being of light and love that we are. And that's our role. It's, um, I, see, I see this a lot and it, it breaks my heart. I see parents who go, well, my child is gonna be this amazing healer. And my child is going to be this gifted psychic. And by the time that that child has been pushed for a couple of years, they're like, yeah, I'm not ever telling you nothing again. They want to, they want their child to have these amazing memories of past lives. Well, who were you in a past life? What did you do? Why are you here? And the kid's like, I want to play. I want to just be. And so the pressure that we put on our kids to follow footsteps that they're not wanting to step into is and can be quite detrimental to their spiritual progression. It can really push them off. And guess who's karmically responsible? Yeah, the people who are pushing them. Those are the people who are going to have to understand that, yes, your child came in to you. And yes, you have gifts too. But are you really owning your gifts? Are you really? 
Because if you were really owning your gifts, you would know that it's important to walk it slowly, to absorb it, to experience it. And it's a joy to do it. It's so exciting to be vibrant and connected and to feel unconditional love and trust within yourselves and everyone and just see the world as a beautiful place to be, to unfold so that we raise ourselves in consciousness. I had somebody tell me they don't want to work with newbies. What, are we all newbies? Are we, are we all just supposed to be elevated in status? I know that that's silly um, because I don't believe that. I believe that we're all very old souls and that we all have the ability to wake up. But we have to heal those parts of our ego that need validation. And we need to heal those parts of our ego that say we have to have the best children, the most polite, the wisest ones, the gifted ones, the straight A students, the, the one who read first, the one who spoke first. I know how much pressure that put on you as a kid. That's why you're putting pressure on yourselves to have these kids and while you're putting pressure on your kids. And that's going to start telling out in your relationship with your kids. It's also going to start telling on your relationship with other people in the family. And more importantly, it's going to affect your other lives that are happening simultaneously. Because we're in a non-linear world spiritually. We're affecting our great metaphysical being our true self with all this gotta haves. You know, I had somebody today tell me um, that I needed to wish my son happy birthday and get over it. Just get over it. Move on. Because I'm a metaphysician. I should also know that where he is. I do. I do. He's He comes around, especially during the harder times. Every holiday, he leaves me a little telltale gift that he's been there. Every birthday, every death anniversary, I feel him. And that makes me miss him more because I'm stuck in this miserable 3D body on earth with a 4D consciousness of screaming to get out with the fifth D opportunity and I have to sit and I have to breathe and I have to hold and I have to wait. That doesn't mean I can push my granddaughter any faster to connect to her dad. It means she'll do it in her time and I have to be gracious and accept that. But the funny thing is, is that we see this as um, because it's not anybody else's walk, dark walk through the dark soul of the night, whatever the walk through the dark, uh, whatever you know what I mean. Since we're we're the ones that are struggling with this, since we're the ones uh, doing our deed, my dark night of the soul, yay, got it. Um, it's going to be different than anybody else's, and it's going to have a different awakening, and that's okay with me. Obviously, it's not okay for other people. Obviously, people are going, well, you're a metaphysician and you teach this stuff and you should know these things. It doesn't mean that I don't wish to see him, even though I see him, even though I know he's on the porch sitting in his chair, which we've never moved, um, even though I know he's laughing, even though I know he gives me bits of wisdom to pass on to friends and family, um, doesn't mean a damn thing when you come across a couple of days that are a little rough to get through. What it means is, is that we need to stand back and give each other space and compassion. And that includes our kids. Our kids are not meant to be miracle workers every moment of every day and they're not meant to be our trophy. So the reason that uh, Nikki, Brother Francis and I created this course together and are so excited 
is because we want you to be able to get where you need to be, all of you, with gentleness, ease, compassion, love, and light, so that you can really laugh and enjoy each other. So those terrible twos are just that, terrible twos. And when they hit that teen thing that they got going on and the hormones go raging, that you're not screaming at them because all that negativity lowers your vibration, it lowers their vibration, and it lowers the house's vibration. Every time that we look at our children in disappointment because they didn't know the psychic answer to who are they talking to, maybe they were just talking to their higher self. We don't know, we're not inside their head. We need to let them. And we need to just accept it as part of the status quo. This is what they do instead of saying, who are you talking to? What are you doing? What are you doing? No, 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 no. You can't, you can't, you got to have a name for your, your imaginary friend. Really? What are we doing to each other? So that we can go, oh, guess what? My child had an imaginary friend. Well, my sister had an imaginary friend. She did. I was really little. And I saw auras and I saw spirit walking around, but she had an imaginary friend. And so I was jealous. And I created an imaginary friend. Later I understood what I was doing, but I named her after my sister, after her nickname, and called her Lucy Bell. That was my magic that was my imaginary friend, because my sister's name at that time was Lucille. And I wanted to have an imaginary friend because everybody thought that was just so cute. Was it? It was. It was very metaphysical. And then life stepped in with the pressures of the life and the generations and the situations that we grew up in. It took away her ability to talk with these invisible friends. And it was a long road for her and all predicated on family not working together in community and not hearing each other and not being that special person for each other. So when we go through this, we fail to acknowledge that we as the adults really need to step up and learn to connect to our higher selves so we know what it feels like. So when we see our children and our grandchildren doing it, we get it and we don't step in their way and we don't try to redirect them because they know what they're doing. That's what we're all wishing for is to go back to the time when we knew what we were doing and have it much easier, have it much better, because then maybe I wouldn't have married, I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have done. That's not true. All those decisions were created to wake you up to this time and place that we're in right now. So wake up. You're a wonderful, beautiful spirit of light and love. And yes, it takes practice. It takes somebody to guide you through the rough waters. It takes time to learn the meditations that bring healing. It takes time to learn to constantly say to yourself that you're on the right path. You know, I, I just mentioned this and I'm going to tell you again. Uh, Michael Rhodes has a course coming up and it starts Monday, November 8th. And I highly recommend this course to anybody. Um, he teaches great stuff. He teaches it in a way that you don't feel judged, but you get the, you get the drift, okay? Even if, if you would normally feel judged by yourself by some other measure, he's not gonna make you feel judged. He's gonna show you how to get through it, um, which is another great thing. But this is why we're doing our course is because we don't have Michael Rhodes in the center yet. I'm working on it. I think COVID needs to have its day in the sun and move on and we need to start connecting again in person and we need to have those classes in person where we can ask unlimited questions, which he offers, but it's still on Zoom and it's still, you know, it's still what it is what it is. I just want you guys to know that there's a way you can get through some of the patches and we're doing it. We're not going to be on, on for Saturday of Thanksgiving. We're not going to be on for Christmas Day or for New Year's Day. So it's going to take us into the middle of January, the eight week course. But it's a really good opportunity. Um, we're not making you pay per person. It's uh, 
not going to be predicated on how many children you have. It has to do with you and your community, your family, your, your unit that you want to help bridge the gap, bring each other's strengths out, and honor yourself and each other with integrity and love. Um, it's really a time that we really need to honor and respect why we're doing what we're doing and hold that space of integrity. Doesn't mean that it's not a rough time for people. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, is this rough. Because we're trying to wake up. And the sooner that we wake up, it won't be rough anymore. It's not going to be difficult to make decisions. You're going to be guided by your higher self. You're going to be knowing on the inner knowing. And these are things that are of major importance is getting in on that inner knowing that you are amazing and that you have all this knowledge within you that you can tap into and be connected to to guide yourself through and to guide your family through. So with all of that being said, I'm gonna put the link if you're interested um, to be the parent or grandparent you wished you had or maybe if you know somebody who is needing some a program like this to connect them um, so that we quit pushing our children to be the child we wished we were because it's rough we are contributing in our own special way to bring forth this awakening and we need to understand and honor where we our role the one we play and uh, understand that we're not going to be a shaman in one weekend and uh, it takes practice it takes study and it takes time we're not going to be miracle workers in one weekend it takes time to build the energy to the higher self. It takes time and we need to be gentle with ourselves. So, you know, when we bring all the good, bad, and the ugly to our life to wake ourselves up, the best thing I can tell you is, is that being a metaphysician is of a higher conscious calling. And if we fail it's because we push ourselves and our young ones to be what we wished we wanted we were and that's silly so we want to help you do both um, as an adult you're going to learn to open to that higher self as your children will learn to be who they are not what everyone else wants them to be not what Nana or Pops or anybody wants them to be grandparents have to hold back they're not going to be lawyers if they don't like law book reading law books they're not going to be a doctor if they don't want to study medicine but they can be amazing spiritual beings that are contributing to our next step in humanity maybe they're going to be the next Martin Luther King maybe we won't have to have civil rights wars maybe we can just all come into gentle love and connection with each other maybe we don't have to fight about politics or vaccines or anything else maybe we can just love each other for where we're at that's my wish for you I'm gonna write your list for your Halloween review make sure you connect to that higher self and know that uh, my heart goes with you always love to all of you um, let's reach to that top of the Christmas tree and place our star right on the top of our head. Y'all have a great holiday um, this Halloween and have a great review. Remember to write down your dream that you dream and that'll give you an indication of where you're headed for for the next year. My heart to all of yours. Bye now.